Hello, Internet. We're back here with more, you know, the not blockbuster, you know, predictions for summer 2019. And of all the not blockbusters, this has one of the closest shots at being a blockbuster. But I don't think it will, and I'll explain why. So you got Brightburn, which is basically the uh, the Superman origin story. But instead of Superman being good, this movie has the premise of what if Superman was a kid and he was evil? So that's the whole uh, premise. And I'm amazed that Sony, you know, who's distributing this, I'm amazed they haven't gotten sued by Warner Brothers, considering it's a straight up Superman story, you know, with the way it's been, you know, you see it in the trailers, the way he comes from space. You know, the way, you know, his parents find him, from the way, you know, his powers. It's a rip-off. It's, it's a rip-off. That's the best way I can describe it. It's a rip-off. But instead of doing, you know, the typical Superman stuff, they go in another direction, which I guess justifies its existence, but I don't think it does. So let's go over its pros and cons. Pros? Uh, the movie does look unique. And in order for your movies to succeed, you need to look unique. You do not want to look generic. And this movie's, you know, unique, you know, look, you know, considering, you know, it's a, a hard R. And it's about, you know, an evil kid who has, like, Superman's powers. That could be appealing to audiences. Particularly comic book fans. And it's because it is technically a superhero movie, but not really. It's a, more of a horror movie. It leans more towards horror than superhero. And then we have James Gunn. I'm not sure if this is a pro or a con because it's a pro in a way because, you know, James Gunn, obviously he's had the Guardians of the Galaxy movies were huge successes. People love those movies. So people want to know what he's doing next. But then there's the whole thing that happened last year during Comic-Con weekend. Those tweets him getting fired off of Guardians 3. And the funny thing is, this movie was supposed to be shown at Comic-Con. We're supposed to see some things about it at Comic-Con, but because of that whole debacle, that didn't happen. <laughs> but, you know, but after, like, a good nine months, and, and, you know, James Gunn, you know, you know, Warner Brothers allowed him to do Suicide Squad 2 or the Suicide Squad, I have no idea what's going on with that movie. Which is kind of funny, considering he already ripped off Superman, which was from Warner Brothers. Now, he's been reinstated for Guardians 3, you know, by Disney. So, maybe it'll be all all alright, but, hey, I mean, the internet doesn't forget. The internet never forgets. Once it's on the internet, it's there forever. Alright. So, people might be uh, still a, a tad bit skeptical of James Gunn. But we'll see. Another con is that the movie potentially could turn off a lot of audiences. Particularly with its main character. This Superman-esque kid. The reason why I say that is because the trailers make him incredibly unsympathetic. Makes him just a a complete bastard, (laughs) to say the least, what he does. Like, he is... Like, this kid is soulless. When, you know, if you see him from the trailers, this kid has no soul. He is an evil, 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 just pure evil. And I don't know if people are willing to watch a movie where a, you see a kid just murder people. I mean, I know Halloween's technically that, but that was like a flashback. And that was a pure horror slasher film. This is different. And I know, like, the main character you're supposed to really root for is Elizabeth Banks because she's the mom. But still, watching, like, a good two hours of the of a kid just murdering people in probably graphic ways, because this movie is hard R, doesn't seem like the most appealing option over Memorial Day weekend, where it has to go up against Aladdin. So, this movie could be lost in the shuffle, or it could just be ignored by audiences. But who knows? You know, crazier things have happened. But, you know, overall, prediction-wise, for the four-day, I would have to guess... Well, well, let's do three-day, because it's a holiday weekend. Three-day, 
between 15 and 20, potentially. Four a day will probably be between 20 and 25, and its overall total will be, like, in the 40s or 50s. This movie could be extremely front-loaded, because it has to deal with Godzilla 2, and then Rocket Man, and then uh, Dark Phoenix, and then Men in Black. It's got a lot of competition coming its way. So this movie will likely have some real short legs. But as long as it's low budget, it should be fine. So next up, uh, we're going to be doing a smaller movie uh, called Book Smart. Don't know much about it. I don't know much about majority of these. I mean, some of them I do. But the reason why I don't know is because I'm just generally not interested in them. <laughs> and I'll never watch them under any circumstances because why would I? I might watch this, though. But, yeah, that, uh, that'll be the next prediction. So make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment. Uh, if you want to check out some other box office predictions, I have two playlists. I have the, you know, the summer 2019, you know, the blockbusters. And then this is the not blockbusters or the smaller films or the bombs, <laughs> depending on how you see it. So, yeah, that is all. And I am out.